Happy Floss Tube Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 40. Yay! Thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a table full of goodies. We're just going to dive right in. First, I want to say thank you for my returning subscribers. I truly appreciate you coming back every week just to see what I've been up to. And if you just found me for the first time, welcome. My channel is got a lot of stitching, cross stitch, quilting, a little finishing, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but lots of fun. I hope you consider checking me out and subscribing, hitting the bell and all the things. But we're just going to dive right in to today's episode. I've got a list because I've got some stuff to share this week. Lots to do. I can't believe it's only been a week, but I have a list. So let's just review what today's episode is going to include. I've got not one, but two fully finished projects to share with you. And one of them you've never seen before because it was a start and a finish all this week. Super excited to share that one with you. And then the other finish is something that I just finished stitching last week, but now I've got it fully finished, ready to go and display in my home. Um, I've got three whips to share with you that I've been working on trying digital, digital, really trying to get them done. Um, I also this week, who was I? I had a quilt top start and finish that I want to show you. I've got some haul from Fat Quarter Shop, from Michaels, from Walmart, little finishing, a little stitching, a little quilting, all the things, lots of haul. I've got a giveaway today because I thought it would be fun. And then I've got a little bit of Tiger Lily Shop update at the end of the episode in case you want to see a little sneak peek of what's coming. So let's just dive right in. You know what? I'm going to start with the best because that's how I roll. So I don't know if I've talked about this magazine before and I'm not the only one like this. If you're cross stitcher, this should not be a new magazine to you. Um, but it came in my mailbox this weekend. And of course, take it out of the mailbox. That immediately is a stop all that you're doing and sit down, grab a cup of coffee and just flip through the pages. And so that's what I did. It was a fantastic Saturday morning, which is when I pulled it out of the mailbox and I flipped through. And the first thing I came to and I was like, oh my gosh, so I put a little clip in it so I could show you and not show you any patterns, um, was this pattern from Hello from Liz Matthews. So, so sweet. Love it. It's perfect. I mean, first of all, that pillow finish is on point. Love it, Liz. It is so manageable because I start and finish it. 62 by 60. I think it's like seven colors. I don't remember exactly. Oh, I should have my project card. It's here somewhere. I'll show you my project information card. My stack. Ah, is that it? Yes. Okay, here it is. Hello from Liz Matthews. And I still have my needle minder on the card. So we'll show you. What did I do? Let me put my glasses on so I can read it. Just in case you're listening and not looking up. Because that's how sometimes I watch Flops Tube too. She called for one, two, three, four, five, six colors. I went and changed five out of the six of them. Because I wanted to do it immediately. So I pulled from stash. I stayed... Um, Conceptually, I mean, it's pumpkin, so you need some variegated oranges. And then coal, I used onyx instead of coal. And um, molasses for the stem, I used wood trail instead. It was just a brown. And, and, and then I pulled three oranges that were Weeks variegated colors that I had that I thought would look good. And then the gray is actually a Mohs Silk. Love my Mohs Silk stash. So I pulled from that. I grabbed a little sample that I had of 14 count fiber on a whim, milk and honey. It was this little ornament size because this is a sweet little pattern, 62 by 60. So it was this sweet little finish. Started it, like I said, on the weekend. Got it done in like three nights of stitching. Then I immediately had to go to Michael's, which is why now I have Michael's Hall to finish it. Um, I wanted to, I could have just done a pillow finish and her pillow finish was super cute. Um, but I need, I wanted a little bit more like tabletop decor and I, again, still don't have my dough bowl. So the, the pillow, anyway, I went to Michael's and I found this perfect pumpkin. It was just a sweet, like wooden, heavy duty, like MDF kind of um, flat bottom base. Here's the number on Michael's. Like I just got it this week. So if you like this, go get it. Now I will show a picture right here of what it looks like before. Cause it actually has, there was a zillion of them 
A through Z. It has the letter on it. So it's just a cute little decor, a little natural piece with little white pulp edges. And then I um, sticky board covered layer one, layer two, got this super cute grow grain wire ribbon with this um, yummy terracotta orange stri ticking stripe in it. Also, Michael's. I went to my button jar, pulled a black button that is just, I have a quite a button collection and I pushed put that in the center and then she was done and so sweet I love her so much I can't wait to put her in my holiday Halloween fall the decor I haven't figured out so anyway this magazine is that's not the only thing I need to set so now I will move on to the next thing because it is jam-packed with goodness so you have two ways to get this you can either subscribe and it will come to your mailbox super great but if you wanted to just test it out just to see if you wanted to check it out my friend Rachel at Treehouse Fiber Arts still has some in her shop so go to her shop add it to cart maybe put some of the LFA linen Ada and or linen I think she's doing a restock she's probably not supposed to tell you but if you're on her, her newsletter list you might find out but I think it's coming soon um a little Ada restock so stock her website but in the meantime add this to your cart because it's a great way to just check it out um I subscribed to the paper and with the paper subscription then you get access to all the past digital copies bonkers awesome I've talked about it before but anyway love that magazine it is such a great I mean it's a $10 magazine and I've already stitched one pattern I mean it paid for itself already and there's lots of great stuff in there that I want to stitch okay so that was my first start and finish like get her done week so excited now last week I showed you Hilda Boo and what's it called Hilda Boo and Sunflowers too. Oh yes, so sweet. Um, I finished, showed you that finish last week. And since I had the glue gun out um, and the board and the thing, I went into my, remember behind the wall is the secret room, behind the curtain room, um, into a bucket of frames. And I will show you what this was. This was a picture. So this was just a Hobby Lobby. I'm a big, first of all, I love to thrift frames. But then I also, when I'm at Hobby Lobby, I go to their clearance section, love a good clearance tag. And if it looks like something that, that is going to A, be a great price, and B, be perfect for a finish someday, I add it to my cart. And this was one of those things. And like you see, this was a baby's frame and it was supposed to have a frame on the inside, but instead it's a nice thick, this is my favorite, these thick frames, cause they can be shelf sitters like this one and one out of shot but it's a shelf sitter frame this is my finish so it's just a sweet white and so this was the five by seven frame as you can see and i just went ahead and mounted right on top of it i've got two layers of fabric pulled from my fabric staff um this is mounted on foam core just because that's a lot of sticky board that and it's not the cheapest foam core i can get at the dollar store so i um Mounted my fabrics in foam core because this could handle the chunkiness of it. I didn't want the pumpkin to be chunky, so I did use sticky board on both of those. But on this one, I went ahead and I went a little cheaper and I used the foam core for the two layers of fabric. So it's a little thicker, you can see. Um, and then I used my glue gun to do all the things. And then I used sticky board proper um, for my stitching. And I just, you know, mounted it to the boards. One, two, three, glue gunned it up. Got this grow grain. Where was Walmart Hall just this week? They just started their Christmas bonkers, ladies and gentlemen. People, it's going to be great. But I did add some stuff to my cart, um, and this was one of them. I thought it would be perfect for both winter or Halloween and Christmas stitching. And again, it's another one. I love that button. It was just big and chunky and has a le leather tag through it. And so this is my sweet little finish. It's a little too tall to sit on my shelf, but it looks perfect on my little entryway. Then it's going to be fall first, and then I'll switch it to Halloween. But that is my sweet finish of Hilda Boo and Sunflowers too. So those are my two finishes this week. Um, super exciting. I have big plans. I think I'm going to try a different Walmart. Like I said, the Walmart just, um, the one local to me, just like you could tell, they they brought out the boxes just this week. And of course, I'm sitting there rifling through the, oh, this is good. Oh, you haven't even put it on the shelves yet, but I need this. 
Um, so I'll, I'll maybe like give them a couple days to unpack their boxes, but I want to make sure I go there early because I know that stuff sells out like this and their finishing stuff is awesome. Um, I will show you in the hall some of the other things I got just this season already, which is going to be so fun. But let me just show you some of the other stitchings. I have my three whips for this week. Sorry. Um, like I said, the pile is on point. So this is... This was something from March Mania. During March Mania, I definitely pulled all the smalls and um, I tried to do different themes each week. And so the fall week is coming back because I'm trying to get some smalls and finishes done to display for this season. So this was an Etsy designer. Let me show you the, this is the name of the designer, TJ Designs. I'll let that sit up there for a little bit. Of course, there's no cover photo um, on this PDF download, unfortunately. But here's my project information card. And remember, I've had a lot of people then ask. So if you're new here, my project information cards are an original design by Tiger Lily by me. And you can buy them on my website. The link is down below. So if this is something that you think might be helpful to you in keeping your stitches organized, it's helping me with the color conversions and the fabrics. And I don't have to remember all the things. Um, but so you can get them in packs of 10 or packs of 50 down at my website. Um, and they're great just because it's free shipping if you add it to one of the project keepers on the 15th. Just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but so like I said, there's no cover photo for this pattern. So, but the good news is, is I'm really far along. Almost done. So close. But I wanted to finish my um, little boo from he Hello from Liz Matthews. Sorry, I did not iron. I am, and this is wrinkled beyond wrinkled, but oh my goodness, it's so cute. F, the F shows up more in person. I know it's not kind of not showing. So this was a full color conversion. You know, I took the inspiration. These are the colors that I think it's charted in DMC. And instead of using DMCs, I pulled from my Mohs Silk and my Mercedes Silk and from my Overdyes just to stay in these fun, funky colors for fall. How fun is that? Not just the traditional orange, which I'm here for, but I thought this was so fun. So it's cute and there's actually going to be um, green stems and leaves coming down or, you know, yeah, coming down the pumpkins and then she's done. So I just have to finish this mustard pumpkin do the leaves, and then there's actually white. These are these lines that aren't stitched yet are gonna be white. Just describing it since I don't have a cover photo. So I'm hoping to get that done this week. It, it's stitched on 18 count platinum, one strand of thread. So it's got a nice prim coverage, and you can see here's my bag of floss. Yeah, I use playing cards as floss drops, especially for my Mohs silk, since I get hanks of them. And it's like six cards per hank. Anywho, so that is one of the whips that I worked on this week. And the other one, oh my gosh, so close last night. So this is another one from, this was from March, no. This was from Stitch Mania, May. And um, this was one of my freebie Fridays that I showed you guys. So let me just cover, let me cover most of the pattern. Let me cover, even though it's a freebie. Um, but I do want you to go to the designer's website and get it yourself. So it's Smell My Feet from La Lori at La Di Da. And you can get that on her website. There you go. So sweet. I loved it. And so I started working on this. I started working on this during Mania. This was a Stitch um, Stitch Mania start. I did my own color conversions. It's only two colors. It's black and green. And she put hers on orange. Well, instead of putting mine on orange, which I love a good orange. Don't get me wrong. I pulled from my hand dyed by Patrick Ada this yummy grape juice purpley and I thought the green just popped with that purple so I'm so close you can see I'm just in that last boot fill in last night I tried to do it I just couldn't stay up and fill it in but I'm hopeful that I can get this one done this weekend no problem so hopefully um, I can find a good place way to finish that whether it's a pillow 
or they had this cute stand that I didn't get at Michael's because I didn't know what I was going to go on it. But now I think that might be perfect for it. So stay tuned. Maybe next week I'll have another full finish for you. I don't know. Who am I? We'll just have to see. And then last but not least is my Felicia. She is still, I'm still trying to work on her daily just to get some stitches in. Let me take the cover, take it out just so you can see. This is by Fox and Rabbit, Margaret Felicia Dyson. This is the sal I have going on. So I would love for you to join on Instagram if you want to join, but this is such a sweet, sweet, funky floral that I am loving. So that's the sal is funky floral sal. Here it is right here. So go check out that hashtag, follow along and you can see. Um, this is being stitched on. Let me pull my project information card so I can talk intelligently. This is being stitched on 20 count popover by my dear friends at Legacy Fiber Arts and Treehouse. Fiber Arts that you can get. And again, you didn't hear it from me. I mean, you did. She, she won't be mad, but I think there's a 20 count and 18 count coming soon. TBD on the exact date, but it's coming. And I think popover is one of the colors. So if you've been waiting to join me using my fabric, I think it's coming for you guys. So 20 count LFA popover. This was the one where I did a full RFL conversion. Now we talked about this last week, so I'm not going to deep dive into like what I told you all last week, but do you see what's here now? A new green. See, doesn't it play nice? It's nice and bright and vibrant. And the good news is, is that arrived this week from Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you so much for your fast shipping. I um, immediately pulled it out and started stitching on it. So I, but I left the old one in so you guys could see. Let me get my board so we can just talk amongst ourselves about what we think. So now, remember, I did a full RFL floss color conversion. Now you can use the DMC's gorgeous or it's charted, I think, in Bella Soir or Verisois, and um, Silks, which is a gorgeous too. Um, but I wanted to do an Aura Floss because there were only 11 colors, so I thought it was a perfect opportunity to give the Aura Floss some love. So, uh, so what I did while I was waiting for my green, patiently waiting for my green to show up, I went ahead and to continued working on that border because that border is no joke. It goes around the whole thing. And the border is no joke, it's like, one, two, three, four, five colors, each little floral stand. Obviously the, the green, that's easy. I could just do that. Once you get the pattern in your head, you could just do it. Although I did mess up once. Nobody's counting. There are no cross stitch, please. I'm okay with it. But I do know that there's an area here that was supposed to be six and instead it's five. So now my count is off, but I did not rip it out because I was already two more flowers over and I was like, no ma'am, I am not pulling that out. I'm just going to remember. We'll see if I remember, but I'm just gonna remember that I'm short a stitch and I need to add a stitch. Of course, I've already forgot. Not this way, this way. I need to do it tonight before I forget. <laughs> so I was short a stitch on one of these buds. And so I need to add a stitch to another bud so that the length of my border on the bottom is correct. And I'm okay with it. Do you know where it is? I mean, I do because I just did it like, I mean, it might be here, but you won't see it. It's one stitch. Anywho, love it. So I went ahead and I had started stitching the border as I was waiting patiently for my green and my green showed up yesterday. So as you can see, let's talk. Remember, this was the green that I originally charted. So there's dark green. It's a nice hunter rich green. My sun isn't really blowing. Is it also, if I hold it back here, the color of that fabric is so on point. Let's just... Let's just awe on that for a while. Oh my goodness. Sue's Ada. I've never seen the linen because I'm a stitch on linen. I'm an Ada stitcher, but the Ada is beautiful. Sometimes Ada, the dyeing, I think on Monaco, obviously everything dyes different, right? Not, not new. The linens and the Monaco's and the even weeds and the Ada's, they all dye. They take the color differently. And sometimes with other dyers, I've noticed that their Ada just isn't as modeled. I don't know if it's just, it soaks it up high. I, I don't know, not a dyer. But but Sue's technique, whatever it is, gives you just the right, the perfect modeling on this piece. So this is popover, just remember. 
gorgeous. And this is a white foam core board. So you can definitely see the beautiful color. I love that I put that. So you can see the color against white. So you can kind of see what it is. Okay, now let's come up to the stitching. Now that we've oohed and awed on the fabric long enough. Just kidding. Can it be ever be too long? No. So there's the dark green. There's the hunter green, which is a lot of the green. But there is, hold on. I already put it back in the bag. Sorry. You can see there's an there's a lighter green. Well, originally I had gotten this one as the lighter green. Can you see? Oh, there goes my glasses. You can see. And I just I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. And so I got this one. And I like it a lot. I like it. I think it's bright and it's funky. It goes with the funky. I mean, this patchwork, I need to know the clothes. Right? This patchwork pot is my favorite. And the green, the funky green right here inside this floral is perfect compared to the other one is in this one. Yes, I have not frogged the wrong green out yet because I wanted to compare and contrast with you guys. So that's it. So I will work on frogging. I need to find a little, little baby tiny, like I don't wanna have to stitch both greens, but I don't know if I can frog just the one color. We'll see. So I do have to work on that, um, but I'm loving it. I'm going to continue to just work on this. It's really, it looks over, it looks big. It looks like a big girl. But really, remember, I am going to, I think I'm going to bring the border down a, a smidge, lose the words, and just have this part. So if I could just like bang out some border work, these other little tiny motifs will come together real fast, I, I think. I don't know. You know, I started this on August 18th. So we're only a month into it love that the fact that I have my start dates on these cards within them. So I don't have to remember any of that stuff. So I started this on October, October, August 18th. So it's just over a month and that's pretty good considering all the other things I'm stitching. So I'm pretty excited about it. So who knows where I'll be a month from now, but I'm enjoying it. And I've had some new friends that are joining. Oh my gosh. Let me, my friend Gwen just messaged me last night saying that she got the PDF and not the hard copy. She wanted to know. Yes. Okay, so she, I can't show you the chart. Okay, can't show you the chart. Hold on. Let me get my glasses. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes it happens. She wanted to know, and I'm just going to show you what, what's going on. If in case you decide to stitch this. So here it is, right? Here's the cover. So she sent me a message and she said, so I got the PDF and I've been stitching and da, 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 but I saw on the pattern. So on the chart, there's this rogue stitch. She calls it the carry stitch. Love that. I mean, I think I might just have to put it just to cause, just kidding. I won't, but there's a rogue, just random stitch that I'm, I'm guessing was just a charting oopsie do because it is not, it's a rope. So in this border right here, right? In the, in the left hand, well, she was a left hand start. And so that's how she got to it. I'm not there yet, but there's a rogue stitch right in, right in this like 90 degree corner area. There's one little stitch charted. Can't show you the chart. Charted to be not part of the stitch. And yes, the answer is I mine is the hard copy that I got from in stitches here in Mount Vernon. And it also has the rogue stitch. I'm thinking now I'm going to put it because it's a story and I love that it's part of my floss tube story and my friends that are coming to tell me and point it out and the fact that she called it the carry stitch. I love it. So it's in the chart. Things happen. By the way, I think there's some charting oopsie doos in, uh, in the primitive, the, in that punch needle primitive magazine. There's a, just, anyway, things happen. I mean, we're all human. So I completely understand, but I love it. So that's the story. Yay. That's my um, other whip. So that's not bad. Look at me. Ring and chug it right along. So those are, that's what I stitched on this week. So now we're going to move on to my haul. Oh, let me grab some good stuff. Okay. So yes, I put all my new haul on one of my trays that goes inside my island just because I didn't want to put it away.
away until I showed you guys what I got. So again, I went to Michael's and Walmart just this week. This is just a little finishing haul just in case you want to get into finishing. So like I said, I got ribbon at Walmart. So cute. Oh, man, you can't beat their prices. So I got a big one and a little one and a red one. So that's fun little Christmas finishing. Of course, I already used it. This was the ribbon that I got at Michael's. It is wired ribbon, 25 feet. So cute, it was perfect for the Liz Matthews pumpkin. I'm sure I'll use it again. That was my little ribbon haul. So while I was at Michael's, I also got, how cute are these tags? Again, just this week, so you can totally still go. But I thought these would be cute little finishes. I was thinking maybe hello from Liz, Ma but it did not go on there, but that's okay. So, and of course, you know, so I'm just gonna cover this up with the fabric and the doodahs. I don't know, I'm thinking it might be too heavy. I was thinking my 12 days of Christmas ornaments that I still have to figure out how I'm gonna fix, finish them, but it's too big, it's not the right size. But maybe one of your ornaments, like take the jute off and put more Christmassy, but it could be a cute, it's a little heavy. But if you have a big tree and you do like big ornaments on your tree, this could be super cute way to put your stitching finishing on. Okay, I just had to get this mason jar. It's another one of those shelf sitters because I love those. Again, from Michaels, but I thought like one of the beehive sunflower, I don't have anything in my wet pile that is gonna go on there, but I've seen lots of good patterns. So I thought this was perfect little finish just to add to my spinach stash at Michael's. Also, as I was going to the checkout, so this is also thinking, brainstorming for ornament type. So these are 99 cents. Okay, fantastic. But then you'd have to finish them. So you're gonna either spray paint them or whatever, but 99 cents, take away the jute, add your own little wood bead, rim it. It's got a picture, picture hanger or an ornament. But so if you, like we're gonna tweak them, but I think these are perfect and they're much lighter than those to make a little ornament finishes. Don't know. I've already folded it up. I was thinking, Remember my whale? How cute would he be in there? I still think I'm gonna make him a pillow. But something like this three by three, a three by three finish would finish perfectly in there. How fun would that be? 99 cents, can't beat it with a stick. And then also in the checkout aisle, because I'm a sucker, these wood doodahs. So it's just these little doodah cutouts, $3 each, and you just paint them. So I, again, I was just gathering all the things so I could finish my beautiful little boo, but mm, rogue pumpkin. So these would have to be finished. And so of course I got myself a jar of this yummy pumpkin spice, I think is the color, spiced pumpkin to paint some of these. But these would just be a little cute instead of doing a button, little doodah right in the middle of the bow or on the side, whatever you want. And then lastly, like I said, just starting to come out, but go grab them now because they won't be there. I mean, can you think you're buying Christmas in September? Look at these cute little Ray Dunn inspired ornaments. They're like the wooden MDF, two or three dollars. Cute little tags also from Walmart. These are gonna be super cute, just as little accents in the middle of bows or on the sides or whatever. So cute. Can't wait to see what I do with those. But that was my little Walmart and Michaels haul. So let me put that away and I'll show you what else I got. Okay, so I mentioned to you guys that I had an order from Fat Quarter Shop coming. I had to get the Orofil floss colors, the greens. I got two of them. I picked that one anyway. Of course, nothing can travel alone. A, because you get free shipping when you order $80 or more. So of course, I mean, is there ever a card that's less than that? So I added all the things and I've been waiting patiently. My local in store either sold out every time I would, I went in there twice and they would never had it. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to order it. Had to get autumn cloche. You know, I mean, have we not seen this? I think I've told you all about it twice already, but I finally got the chart. Autumn cloche. I'm going to do it as smalls. I am going to, and I'm kidding it up like stat. It just came yesterday, remember? Um, but I have to figure out how I'm going to break it up into smalls. But I think this is going to be my dough bowl. This is going to be my autumn dough bowl. 
like all three of these together, which did you see? I know, you, well, maybe you haven't. I didn't go to Quilter Station, but the little bowl pillow finishes that Hello from Liz Matthews designed for her project, so cute. And they were all little coordinating pillows. So I was like, of course, anyway, I love the idea of like multiple pillows from the same color family done the same way they're designed by the same part it's like it's good. they just all oh, play so nice hold hands play nice sing kubaya and then of course i mean if you know you know i had to get the seventh day of christmas which day am i even working on i don't know i need to pull that out that is definitely in fill-in station so i'll be pulling that out this weekend i got a baseball game little league baseball game they'll be sitting at for i don't know two three four hours Little League Baseball is so fun, isn't it? Um, so we'll just be at that, and that's good fill-in for my what other one. But I had to get this to add to my collection because I will be stitching them all, and they're going to be a full wall quilt one day. We're at month seven, so I've got a little bit of time. But that was my haul. And then my last thing from Top Quarter Shop was they were doing, like this was one of their deal of the days, the covered buttons. I'd never done, I've never done these before. I don't know how, like, where have I been? Um, so, but I thought, okay, perfect. And I just want to show you. Okay, so this little merge in the shop. So sometimes, you know, I do the vintage stitching. My mom had this great idea. She's like, you know, all those little things. How cute. I mean, whoosh, how cute would those be as little covered buttons and you could make them into needle. What? Okay, so. I'm working on Project Keepers and I'll show you those during the shop updates. But when, you know, I trim exact pieces and things so I have little scraps. And I'll be honest, prior to now, these little tiny one, two inch pieces might have gone away. Might have to just be sacrificed. But now, look at the cover, like that little cherry cover button or that little holly berry. I think I'm gonna give them to my mom. I'm gonna say like, mom, don't you wanna make a hundred covered buttons? And she'll say yes. And you'll see why also during my shop update of why she's so awesome. But anyway, so I got myself a 48 piece set from Cat Quarter Shop. It was like the other day, I added it to the car. So that is my haul. So let's do the giveaway real quick while we're still kind of in stitching mode. And then we'll switch to the quilts and the shop updates just so I can keep you here in case that's what you're here for. Um, we've got three giveaways that I wanna just share the love with you guys. So this is a past the stash, past the pattern. Um, as you can see, I finished Hilda Boo. So I would love to share, you've got plenty of time still to stitch it. She's a little heavy. She's got a big bottom girl. She's got a lot of junk in the trunk that you got to stitch. But besides that, it wasn't a huge amount of stitching. You could get it done if you really wanted to for this year. So we're going to use the word boo. Use the word boo in your comment. Remember, I use the YouTube comment random picker generator thing. So you need to like subscribe and comment. So you need to like the video, the little check mark. You need to already be a subscriber to the channel and you need to use the word for that giveaway. So the word for that one is boo. This is for US only. I'm sorry to my international friends. I'm coming with PDFs in stitch slash quilt over. More details to come later, but there will be some PDF giveaways for you guys later on. But for right now, these hard copies, I have to stay US. Um, so that is one. This is was a donation from a sweet subscriber. She sent me a bunch of charts to share with you guys. So this one's a cute little autumn, this little pumpkin patch in a house and a little sampler. So sweet. It's called Autumn Harvest. So we're going to use the word harvest in this one if you want that pattern. And this was donated by my friend Pam. So sweet. We gathered together by Scissor Tail Designs. Such a sweet little stitch. And if you're going to want to win this one, use the word gather. So good luck. Um, I hope you are excited. Maybe you win a chart. So that is the giveaway, the haul. Let's do my quilt top. Okay, so if you didn't know, if you follow me on Instagram, you do know. But if you haven't follow me then you're like what is she talking I obviously I quilt I've got all the fabric so on Saturday first of all I sat down and I perused my my magazine and then I came in here and I was doing some some keeper maintenance prep work for the next week and or this week anyway for the week 
And I'm scrolling the Instagram and preparing and I learn unbeknownst to myself that Saturday, the third Saturday of every September is National Jelly Roll Day. Self-proclaimed by Moda Fabrics. Now a jelly roll, in case you're not a quilter, you're like, what the heck? Because Patrick was like, jelly, are we talking about donuts? What, jelly? No. Jelly Rolls is a collection of pre-cut fabrics, two and a half inch wide strips with the fabric, so it's 42, 42 inches by two and a half inch wide. It's, they bundle them in a collection. So we'll have a little quilt, one, quilter and 101. When, it, when a fabric designer releases a collection, it's usually 10 to 20 or so prints that all hold hands and play nice together. Like, for example, this one is a Riley Blake by Krista Lee of Quiet Play. This is her 40 pieces, and the collection was called Create. And she had a rainbow collection. So as you can see, there's all these different two and a half inch strips that go with the collection. So that's a jelly roll. I'm not a huge jelly roll collector. I, I kind of stick more with the larger volumes, but that can get cost prohibitive. So if you just, if you love a fabric line, but you're like, I don't know, just you want to have a taste of it, a jelly roll is a perfect way to have a, just a little taste of it. So if you don't know, I'm a tulip pink. That's this shelf is Tula Pink. She is one of my favorite designers. And somehow I was at a local quilt shop, let's say two or three years ago, and they had an out of print. So so usually when fabric comes out, it's it's released once. Like the the people, the manufacturers, Moda, Riley Blake, Art Gallery, all the, they'll print a run once and it's, you know, one and done. So you get it, especially Tula Pink, that's how it works. It's a one and done type of situation, unless it's her basics, but her regular lines, it's one and done. So you pre-order, like Fat Quarter Shop does a great job of letting you pre-order any of the pre-cuts, any of the yardage, all the things. Anyway, so her lines become kind of collector's items, Tula Pink's at least. Um, once they go out of print and you can't get them anymore. And so anyway, I was at a quilt shop about two or three years ago and stumbled upon, it's just one of those, you know, mom and top pop type quilt shops. Love those because you find these hidden gems. I found a jelly roll of Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench was one of Tulip Pink's lines from, I'm going to say five or six years ago. So this was definitely an out of print jelly roll. They were selling it for just regular retail and I grabbed it. It had been sitting in my stack of pre-cuts for years because I just didn't know what I was going to do with it. So Saturday, back to the story, Saturday, I realized it's Moda's declared Jelly Roll, National Jelly Roll Day. So with that declaration, they also released four free Jelly Roll patterns. And so I went and I to their website and I, I loved this one because I love the negative space. I love the, the busyness of, this, of the jelly roll pieces. These are two and a half inch squares. And then the negative space allows those to pop. So this one was called Chain of Fools. It's by Moda, they designed it. And you can see National Jelly Roll Day, September 17th, 2022. That's when they released it. So you can still go get this pattern, pretty sure, on their website. Well, I guess it depends on when you watch this video. But this is, you can get their website or get that pattern and all you need, one jelly roll and three and a quarter yards of a solid. Obviously they used white. I have quite a selection, not quite as many fabrics in the three plus yard quantities, but solids, I do have some. I did not want to do white. Um, it would have been beautiful, but there was a couple of the white backgrounds in the jelly roll fabrics themselves. And so I didn't think that they would pop. So instead I did hot pink. If you're new here, that, or if you're not new here, that won't surprise you. But I'm gonna hold up as much as I can right here. I will insert a little slow-mo video we took in my front yard so I could share on Instagram. But this came together and it, it would have been a day. I started it on Saturday at 4 p.m. I sewed from 4 to 8. 
And then because the Clemson game was on Saturday night, so then I had to stop the sewing and then go to stitching in front of the TV because, you know, that's how that works. And then Saturday morning, I got up and I finished it. And so now it's just a pretty little quilt top. I don't know when I'm going to get to quilting it. I don't know what I'm going to put on the back because I don't have any monkey wrench back to coordinate. But it just allowed those super fun Tula Pink fabrics to pop. So I'm excited about it. It was just a quilt top. Who is it for? Me. I don't know. I just wanted it. And so I made it. Um, so we'll see how that all that works. All right, let me check my list. Finishes whips, quilt top, haul, giveaway shop update. Last but not least. Okay, so did you see my little sneak it a peek um, video that I popped on here on Monday? A little, little surprise Monday video for you guys. If you don't know, here's a little teaser of what it was. <laughs> I did a um, vintage unboxing because my project keepers for October and November. I don't know if I'm going to have a December release. I'm thinking I'm taking the month off, but we'll see. Like stay. <laughs> We're going to stay right here in October. October is going to be Christmas extravaganza. While you're thinking about pumpkins and things, I'm going to be get you thinking about the Christmas because I'm super excited about it. It's my favorite. So I um, opened up all the vintage stitching haul and oh my goodness, I have so much stitching and goodness. Also part of my haul that I'm not even going to show you because it's over here is 45 yards of fabric that I got at my um, local fabric store this week. So there will be a surprise video, surprise, spoiler alert, a surprise video later on this week, maybe this weekend, we'll see. Coming soon, there'll be a video showing you guys how I turn my fabric, piles and piles of fabric from the store and how I organize it put it on these comic book cards. I had some questions of my fabric organization that I got from you guys on Instagram. So I'm just gonna, it's a quickie little tutorial share with you guys. So that is coming. Fabric is over there. I can't even pick it up to show you. But in the meantime, I'm working on Project Keepers. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen some of these, but if you don't, here's a little sneak peek. Now, I did have a collection that is pre-Christmas that was started, so I went ahead and I finished it. So purple, this purple yummy stitching. This is one of my bobbin ones. It still needs to get the binding, so it's still in the binding phases, but it's close. So that there'll be like six, of those I think this was a one-of-a-kind that I teased on Instagram look at that kitty cat ah! that was a pillowcase vintage stitching find that is a double zip one this was, is what's exciting so then I got into my um oh then I got into my vintage Christmas stitching so again these are still in the binding you can see the binding it's almost Oh my goodness, look at those holly berries stitching. Can you even? And this is this prompted a question as to what do you do? What is your Christmas colors? And I was happy to see that I'm not the only one who embraces untraditional, not just red and green Christmas colors. Look at the turquoise and the pink and all of that. On that one, there'll be a couple of those. Oh my gosh, the same stitching, this poinsettia. I had to grab the pinks to go with this. This one's so fun. Again, so they're not all gonna be wild and crazy. This one has just started. That was what that little scrappy to do was. But, so I just started working on these covers yesterday. So, you know, they're coming October 15th is when we're going to have the first big keeper release. There is going to be an explosion of Christmas keepers. And what's exciting, okay? So, if you don't know, Tiger Lily's mom is fantastic. She's the artist, she does my little cards. I don't have one here to show you, but if you ever get a keeper from me in the mail with a note card that does a thank you note card, the cover art is my mom's original painting. Love it, I have so many, like if you did a tour of my house, which I'll have to do one day, maybe during Christmas. Um, I'll show you guys some of the paintings that are all over the house, gorgeous. Anyway, so she has generously, she did this 
I want to say six, nine months ago, she was down. She's like, well, maybe I'll just pull out my beads and start playing. And what are these little scissory zipper? What are these fobby things? So she made some beautiful zipper fobs a while ago. And they were like, I just threw them in to the keepers. And so she saw my Christmas was coming and she decided, well, I'm going to make some Christmas. So get excited. I don't know how many are there. <laughs> I don't know. You know, she kind of just does it. So I don't know how many little surprise zipper fobby things are coming. But October's collection will include some surprise zipper or scissor. Because they have a nice little chunky clasp on them. You could use them for either one with your purchase. It might be the first 10 people. It might be the first 20. I don't know. I've got six already. And here she is right here. Sweet thing. She is just working, working away. I've tried to get her to become a stitcher. That's not her jam. So instead she's making little scissor fobs. So I don't hate it. Um, you guys are the recipients of super fun Tiger Lily Mom original pulls. So how fun is that? So those are going to be in October too. A little surprise spoiler. Yay. All right, friends. That is today's episode. I went through my list. Checked it twice. We are good. Yay. Santa's coming. Um, okay. That's all I've got, friends. So until next time, which is next Friday, happy stitching, friends.